I built these five drawers. Now I need a box to go around them to turn them into a dresser. I measured a stack of drawers and the box is going to have two frames like this made out of 2x4 material. One in the front, one in the back, plywood in between. And I already cut out the material for these, uh, these pieces here. Now I just need to joint them and plane them. I also thick this plane them to width. And as I always do with corners like this, I cut box joints in the end with my box joint jig. And here's a screw up. I cut this piece too short. Fortunately, I noticed before I cut the box joint, so I cut this one to match this one instead, instead of complementing it so that I can uh, put some splines in here and join those pieces like this. I just glued a couple of splines in this already so now I know this is the special one and it'll help me line it up when I put it together. I'm just giving the joints a quick squeeze with the clamps near the corners to force them all the way closed. My clamp extender worked well, and then I glued some more pieces of wood in here off camera. Looks messy, but this will be on the bottom. To make sure the edges of my pieces are all straight and parallel, I'd like to cut them a little bit wider and then cut a tiny bit off alternate edges and that way the fence essentially acts like a jointer. These pieces of plywood are going to go in between the dresser frames like this to make the box. Got it upside down and I'm going to join this top with floating tenons and I've marked where they're going to go. I'm cutting quarter inch white slot mortises with my slot mortising machine. It's one of my oldest homemade machines. I usually show these operations fast forward, but this shot is actual speed. And I need an alternate clamping arrangement for that last slot mortise. Long reach clamps to the rescue. And now a corresponding set of slot mortises in the plywood that goes between the frames. I haven't got a quarter inch half round bit, but part of this fancy molding bit has got a quarter inch half round on there, so I'm using that to round the edges. I'm drifting it with just three of the floating tenons on each side. Makes it easier that way. That doesn't look too bad for the top. I actually inset the plywood by about half a millimeter just to make sure it wasn't going to stick out. And now gluing it together. I start by gluing the floating tenons into the plywood. I do that one first because I think that one might be weaker so I want to make sure that one's a good joint. Having glued the plywood top and sides to the front frame, I'm now dry fitting the back frame just to make sure that's going to work out before I glue all that together all at once. I think this is going to be very sturdy. I just hope I can close it all before it starts to set up. Now to pry it apart again. And quickly applying glue to all the surfaces and all the tenons. And also glue in all the mortises, of course. And then frantically applying lots and lots of clamps to make sure I have everything really closed. 
Well, that's uh, not bad as close as the dry fit was, which which is okay. I would have loved to have glued this joint as well, but that would have had to happen when I glued both of those panels in. And if that was glued, I wouldn't be able to wiggle these parts anymore to line up with the uh, mortises here, so I decided to leave this joint unglued. While the glue dries, time to start mounting the drawer slides. I used to always make two little jigs like this to help me position the drawer slides consistently. But this time on a whim I made it have a hook on the far end as well. And I realized this is actually much better because with both of those on there I just push this up as far as it'll go and I know it's positively indexed on both of them. Now with the small screws in the soft wood, the pilot holes are completely unnecessary. But I like to drill them anyways because the screw will follow the pilot hole and that way I know it's in the right spot. For laying out the slides in the cabinet, I just put a drawer with a slide on it in the bottom most position, figured out where the slide goes, top most position, figured out that slide, then made spacers and then just made spacers to evenly space them in here, and that way they're correctly positioned when I screw them in. Inserting the drawers for the very first time. I always find that very satisfying. I want to make the gaps between the drawers a little bit wider, but this is test fitting them before I make adjustments. And I'm pleased they're so close to each other uh, without having fitted those. Just this one here nearly touches. That's almost the right size, maybe a bit bigger. Big enough for a sock to fit in there. After that, tweaking the rest of the gaps. Next I gotta trim the drawers so the sides line up straight. I use my usual method of first making a backwards scoring cut before cutting it all the way off. That way I get no tear out. Those line up nicely now. I'm going to put some oak trim around the front edge like this. I think that'll look real nice. Glue together the frame to go on here and it's box joint, except this part is box joint here and here. Because I cut this joint wrong twice, so it was way too short. Now I gotta glue it on. I've been doing lots of trimming and smoothing the edges, but I had a two and a half year old in the shop with me, so I didn't film very much of that. Next step is to install some handles on here. I clamped together some scraps of wood to make a drill guide for that. And that just hooks on the drawer like this. And I got a counter bar on the back because the screws are too short. Well, these do look a little bit dainty, but I didn't want to put two on there because I wanted to be able to open that with just one hand. And also that way the kids won't be pulling them on one side because there's only the one in the middle. The one worry is that they may use them as a ladder to climb up and they may not be strong enough for that. But the style of handle that I really was hoping for was actually this style of handle. I got these used years ago. I just don't know where to get any more of them. I end up gluing my spacer blocks in place. That way it's more than just this flimsy little screw here that holds the whole drawer slide. It also makes it much easier to take them out for varnishing and then put them back in. I was planning on making a back for this uh, chest, but uh, I'm out of this thin plywood and I don't feel like going shopping right now. And I also skipped on putting plywood on the bottom, though I put these things in there to make sure the bottom is held square. Holding the back square is somewhat unnecessary with these joints. They'll hold it square on their own just fine. And then it was time to varnish it. Uh, with all those drawers, insides and outsides, it's a lot of surfaces. You may notice a little bit of blue light. That's actually infrared from the infrared heater, which I have just where the camera is. That really helps to keep that varnish flowing nicely because it's pretty cool in the basement. 
This is after the second coat of varnish now. Inside of the drawers only have one coat. Uh, this is two coats on the front and the sides. And the cabinet has two coats. I'll put a third coat on the wear surfaces, which is the top and the fronts of the drawers. All right, final coat is on. And I'd like to put that final coat on real thick on horizontal surfaces like that. And it levels out real nicely after that. That's if it's oil-based. The water-based stuff dries too quick. These feet have a forward-sticking toe and that's the support here. So the dresser is less likely to tip forward if the kids pull up the drawer and climb up it. And now it's finally done. Those silver handles look not too bad now that the fronts are a bit darker with a varnish on it. And I love how smooth that varnish came out just from uh, drying when it's really thick. And I realized not having a back is actually not such a bad idea because I may put it where there's a power outlet right there so there's more room for plugging something in behind it. And I keep comparing it to this tall seven drawer dresser that I made for Rachel eight years ago. The fit and finish on this one is better than the one I just built, but I had more time back then too. The internal volume, even though this one is seven drawers and the new one is five, is actually the same. And this one has got these nice black handles that I like so much.